On this episode of Andy's Auto Sport TV, we're going to talk to you about camber and teach you what you need to do to adjust the camber once you've raised or lowered your vehicle. Positive and negative camber is basically how we measure how squarely the tires hit the road. So zero degrees camber would be the, the tires are straight up and down and they meet the road perfectly. Now when you raise your vehicle, you're going to get positive camber. This is caused by the top of the wheels being tilted to the outside. Negative camber happens when you lower your vehicle and the top of the wheels go to the inside. Now why does camber matter? Well, here's what happens. Uh, the vehicle has a factory specification, and the closer you get to that, uh, the engineers design the car based on torque steer, uh, based on when you accelerate the car, maybe the car will squat and the tires will come out. So they have a factory specification that you should stay within those numbers. That's going to make the car handle correctly. Now, when you raise your vehicle and that camber uh, actually goes to positive camber and you start wearing on the outside of the tires, that's kind of real dangerous. It doesn't, the car won't handle really well. It'll kind of follow the road. It's not a very good handling vehicle at all. Now, when you go to negative camber, a lot of race cars put a lot of negative camber in their cars. The reason they do that is when they go into corners, it allows that tire to roll over on itself and get the full contact patch of the tire on the ground. Okay, so if you're not in a racing environment, here's what's going to happen if you don't get rid of the negative camber. You're going to wear out the insides of the tires. The car will handle pretty decently, it won't be a problem, but you're not going to get any kind of mileage at all out of the tires. They're going to really wear out quickly. Now, let's start out by talking about the ways to correct positive or negative camber. Now, keep in mind that your factory vehicle has a camber adjustment and it's designed to do that within the factory ride height. So once you start raising or lowering your vehicle, you're usually not going to have enough adjustment to bring that out. Now, most camber adjustment kits will work with either stock or aftermarket suspension components. All right, let's start off with the easiest. Now, the easiest and least expensive is going to be the camber bolt. Now, you're going to get a lot of adjustment out of these, usually between one and a half and two and a half degrees. There are some that do more, but one and a half and two and a half degrees is a pretty good, uh, a pretty common. Now, as you can see here, are the, how these work, they have an eccentric on the bolt. Now, this goes through either the uh, lower control arm or it goes through the strut, uh, where the strut meets the spindle. And what happens is, as you turn the bolt, it'll allow the, the eccentric to either force the outside of the wheel in or the outside of the wheel out, depending on whether you have positive or ca negative camber. Now, the next one we're going to talk about is a control arm that actually has a movable ball joint. Now, how this works, which is really a great way to go if you have a upper and lower control arms on your vehicle, what happens is you're actually able to physically, the, the ball joint area is actually slotted in the uh, control arm, and you can actually slide that forward and backward. You get a lot of adjustment out of this. This is a great way to go if you have upper and lower control arms on your vehicle. So a question we get all the time is, what is a pillow ball mount and when do I need to replace it? Well, pillow ball mounts only work with a strut style system, whether you have the factory McPherson struts or you have a coilover kit. Now the pillow ball mount actually holds the coil spring to the strut or to the coilover itself. It's this piece right here. Now when do you need to replace it? Well, if you're running a factory uh, McPherson strut suspension, a lot of times the bushing in here will wear out and you'll actually see this move back and forth. It actually makes the suspension very sloppy. You need to replace it then. Also, if you're going to really slam your car, you're going to want to use what's called a caster camber plate. And what this does is this actually takes the place of the pillow ball mount, it bolts in its top, and the strut actually comes through this. Now this gives you the ability to either slide the top of the strut in or out and backward or forward to adjust caster and camber. Now we're going to talk about the rear camber arms. Now so far what we've talked about, the caster camber plates, the camber bolts, and the control arm with the adjustable ball joint, those can be used in the front or rear depending on what your application is. There are cars that have control arms in the back and of course you can get these ball joint, uh, movable ball joints for those. This rear link arm is just specifically that for the rear. What it does is it actually connects the rear control arm uh, to the, or the rear spindle to the frame and actually allows you to adjust it in and out. This particular one from SPC is what we're going to be installing on our G35 here in just a few minutes. So now you know about the common types of camber adjustment kits that are out there. 
Now we sell them all at Andy's, but that doesn't mean that you'll see every type for your particular vehicle, as all vehicles are engineered differently. As you browse the Andy's Autosport website under camber kits, you'll see only the kits that are available for your specific vehicle. Now in the description, you'll see varying degrees of camber adjustment. Some kits may have one and a half degrees or two and a half degrees or even more. This tells you the amount of camber you can adjust for your particular vehicle. Okay, now we're going to be installing our rear camber arms on our G35. Now what I typically do is, now you can see these things are fully adjustable. They're going to go right up here like this and replace the factory arm. Now what I do when I install a, a system like this, we already know that this is the natural ride height where it's going to be and where it sits. I've got the suspension unloaded. So I get it relatively close where it is right here because we're going to adjust it to where we can drive it to the alignment shop as soon as we're done. All right, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and remove our factory arm right here. Just two bolts, very simple. Now this is the, this right here is an adjustment, it's an eccentric, and this is the only adjustment that there is in the factory control arm. And as you can see, we have a whole lot more that we can adjust with our SPC. Okay, now on our G35, our sway bar mount is actually in the way a little bit. All you've got to do is just pull the sway bar out of the way. This will get and allow us to get this bolt right, this uh, adjustment bolt right here out. Now remember, whenever you're putting this back together, don't forget about your eccentric. Now this goes on, it usually only goes on one way, and you need to make sure that it fits inside the slots so that you don't have any, uh, so you don't, you don't bend it when you're putting it in. Okay, don't forget, now once you get everything torqued down like it's supposed to be, don't forget to torque down and tighten down these locking nuts. Now these are jam nuts, and they keep this adjuster from being able to turn on its own. The alignment shop will go ahead and loosen those up and put it where it needs to once you take it down and have it aligned. Okay, now that we've got our SPC rear camber arms on our G35, we're going to take it to the alignment shop. Now, remember, anytime you work on the suspension, guys, make sure you have your car aligned by a proper professional. Make sure that they address all aspects of your alignment. You want caster, camber, and tow. Most alignment shops are going to take care of you that way anyway. Popular brands we carry are SPC, Blocks, Blackworks Racing, and Skunk 2. We hope you've learned something today, and we'll see you on another episode of Andy's Autosport TV.